Nigeria, Nigeria Angola. Angola. I really do want Angola to win. So do I. So I'm going to go for Angola. <laughs> I, I think they are the best footballing team in the tournament. All right, guys, welcome back to our AFCON conversation here on the Malam Go podcast. <laughs> A lot of people are not happy with us because the last episode, the bracket, we got it embarrassingly we wrong. We Ah, bro, I tell you, me, I'm a big man. I, I, I'm not afraid to admit where I got it wrong. I did. I expected Cameroon to beat Nigeria. It didn't happen. Apologies to our Nigerian friends. Hopefully the journey ends on Saturday. <laughs> oh, wait. I take that back. If it doesn't end, don't come and insult me, please. <laughs> I expected... Kivet to kind of go through, so that wasn't they did a big surprise. Yeah, but the ones that I got so badly wrong, South Africa. I, I did. I expected Morocco to beat South Africa. Egypt. I expected Egypt to beat RDC or DR Congo. Equatorial Guinea. I expected Equatorial Guinea to beat Guinea, and, and I the- expected Senegal to beat Cote d'Ivoire. I got all of them wrong. I don't know how many you got right. I think I got a couple. I got Angola right. I got Nigeria Angola, right. Angola, we all got it right. Right. I got a couple very right as always, as we all did. And I got Cote d'Ivoire also going through right. And let's just say, if you be like me, I get only two correct. <laughs> I got Angola. I got Cape Verde. I got DRC. Uh huh. Yeah, got, you got DRC uh, right. There was some fixing. No, no I got Morocco wrong. You got Morocco wrong. Yeah. Did you I said Nigeria? I wanted them to What about Mali? No, the Mali? The Mali in Nigeria. Mali and Burkina. You got Mali? No, I picked no. Burkina. Burkina. We all you all picked Burkina. Burkina. We all did. I got three right. Which one? I got the... Um, Cape Verde, Cape obviously. One. Angola, obviously. Angola one. And then the... Um, how do you call it? Which one? Um, the other one. Guinea. No. no. Uh, Ang- you got Angola. Did you get the RC? You didn't know, pick the RC. The RC. Then the, what about Mali? Mali, Burkina. You picked Burkina. No, you picked Burkina. So you got two right. I got only two right. You got yeah, two right, only two. My <laughs> but that, that, has been, that has been a story of the tournament, hasn't yeah. it? Where, where the surprises, true, true, man. The surprises. True. It's been a story Very of the tournament. And it's made a tournament. Oh, oh yeah, my God. Superb. Listen to the key things or listen to the key nuggets. First of all, all the top five ranked teams in Africa are out. out. Ooh. Number one ranked team, Morocco, Ooh. out. Number two ranked team, Senegal, uh, Senegal out. Number three ranked team, Egypt, out. Oh. Number four ranked team, Tunisia. Algeria, out. Number five ranked team, Tunisia, out. out. That is f- fact number one. Fact number two. All eight quarterfinalists from the last AFCON. That's crazy. Are odd. <laughs> that is ridiculous. It doesn't, it doesn't happen anywhere. It doesn't happen I'm not sure there's anywhere. any single tournament. It doesn't happen yeah. in All eight quarterfinalists yeah. from the last, last AFCON yeah. are all out. Every single one. And then, my favorite. All the Maghreb teams are out. Yeah. That's also sits wow. in the top five. Top five yes. of Africa. All they are the, top the North five. African teams are out. Yeah. Two didn't make it out of the group, Tunisia and Algeria. Algeria yeah. And then two got kicked out in the round of 60, Morocco and Egypt. Wow. Wild. Wild. How often does this happen? No, it's bro. I, I, this I tournament have, has thrown up some some fascinating matches, storylines, shots. That's why now predictions are way. Yeah, you have to be careful, bro. <laughs> 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 sure. no, so on that note, it is what it is. Predictions are, note, predictions are not prophecies. On so. that note, <laughs> Nigeria, Cape Verde, quarterfinal. No, Nigeria, Nigeria Angola. Angola. So, Nigeria, Angola, I beg your pardon. Look, South Africa playing Cape Verde. I really do want Angola to win. So do I. So I'm going to go for Angola. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I think they are the best footballing team in the tournament. Like when it comes like when it actually comes playing. possessing the ball and play. And, so, and 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 getting their influential players to get involved re, like r- regularly throughout the games. They have been a delight to watch. They've been to be a fair. delight to watch. But hey, maybe the Super Eagles with Victor Osime. There's no maybe. maybe. Well, but Angola I want win. Angola to win. And you think Angola, they will win. Yeah, yeah, I believe they will win. No, listen, I think Nigeria will go through largely because uh, Angola's attack they're so fluid and they complement each Very other brilliantly fluid, well. Mabulunu's finish, Mabulunu's finish is one of the best technical executions I've seen. Yeah. Didn't open himself up, just just carry the ball in an angle. Right. He doesn't, he doesn't make sense. He doesn't. It's, it's not scientifically. He doesn't it's, make sense. Yeah. He, he's so good a player. Look at what he did though. 
first touch, yeah. watch the keeper. And he just, oh. no, it's not the, and if he's I really open he himself, that's what I'm saying. He, he doesn't carry the sense. ball. Because he had watched the keeper, he knew how to oh caress God. the ball into the net. His body alignment, where his body was and how his foot went. Absolutely. That thing is, it's FIFA. You don't do that thing in real life. One player who mastered that is Chan. Yeah, oh, see, but honestly, no, but honestly, seriously, this okay. doesn't happen Baby anywhere. Be my guy. Yeah. But this, but this guy Baby is didn't do it like that. Nah, this is right. different. It's different. It's, it's, it's not a normal finish. Baby Jack will fetch you and then Baby Jack will I can guarantee it. you Mabululu won't score the same chance. Yes. He, can, okay. he, he will not, he will not, he can't repeat that technique. It's as um, near impossible. The audacity. But I love the way they play. Yeah. Unfortunately for them, they're coming up against, I think the best defensive unit I've seen at the AFCON. I don't see how they breach Nigeria, but I think Nigeria have got at least a goal in them. And they've got what it takes to prevent goals from coming to them. So I, I think Nigeria will go through. I, I, I think believe. I think if Nigeria really want to go through, they'll have to score at least two goals. That's good. Because point. Angola, the, that, that's Angola a good point. would definitely put the ball in the back. Nigeria's defense is what is carrying them in this competition. Yeah, Cameroon didn't have been a solid. shot on target. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, no, because Cameroon they lack creativity. They've considered just a goal, yeah, Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. The Equatorial Guinea's yeah. opening yes. goal there. Yeah. Yes. And even that game, Okutura Guinea struggled for opportunities. That yeah, was that's, literally like their only chance. That's true. Who are you picking? I'm picking Nigeria. Why? Because, look, put the football aside. When it gets to this stage of the competition, you need some a certain level of level-headedness. What I saw from the Angolans after uh, they, they won their round of 16 game, they look suspect. Sitting mm. in the dressing room, calling out Nigeria, will beat them, they should come. That's how they are going to lose. I uh, I agree. I am for the first time I'm picking Nigeria. I have hey! a certain so, so which means I'm the only person you're going for. I'm going yeah. yes. Let's no, go. But let the record end. show that genuinely I will be happier than you. If I'm like, 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 put me all, put me all, put me all. Super <laughs> eagles waiting the happy, waiting the share. Like, Tell me, every, no. every time I want to hear, I wish all that they are loving, no matter the. Go, uh, uh, uh. I, have I told you this story? Ole, 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 ole. I think I think fun to know this story. But in 2000, uh, can 2000, that was my first AFCON. Yeah, right. yeah we you can remember. You yeah. watched physically. Yeah. Uh, I cried after Nigeria lost the final. Ah. Um, now, nobody in my house understood. So when everything had settled, my mom came to me like, why, Are you okay? why were you crying? I said, yeah, Nigeria lost. She said, hey, like, hey, you, didn't cry when, you didn't cry when Ghana, Ghana was kicked was out. King, and I yeah. said, no. I thought I was Nigerian. <laughs> 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 no. And I had a very genuine explanation for it. <laughs> okay, go on. Now, growing up, my mom loved Kanu and Okocha and Babangi and Co. Oh. So when we were watching football, she's always, oh, like, oh, Kanu is going to play. So because of the way she related to us, yeah. them, I genuinely thought I was Nigerian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, which, I mean, is yes. <laughs> even the Sydney Olympics, you see that uh, countries will come out. Yeah, yeah, Nigeria like, came out. Charlie, come and see me. <laughs> <laughs> Excited. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> my favorite game of this competition so far: South Africa versus Cape Verde. I have no idea what to expect. Situ. So, the winner, Angola. Nigeria meets South Africa. Uh, right? No, the winner of that uh, particular game will yeah, meet yeah, the, the winner, winner of yeah, 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 the winner. Yeah, that's, that's the side of the draw. That is yeah. that side of the draw. Look, you want South Africa and Nigeria to meet it? That would be no. some game. No, I'll go for Kevin to beat SA. Yeah, to beat South Africa. South Africa and the Hugo Bruce are a completely different animal. Listen to this: they are beating in twenty of their last twenty-three games under Hugo Bruce in this tournament. Kevin. You cannot rule them out. They are capable of beating any team. From what I saw of them against Ghana, against, um, how do you call Egypt, it? Egypt. Egypt and, against, and from what I saw of them in that round they of They did struggle against Mauritania. It wasn't straightforward. No, Mauritania had a man sent off, took them a last Mor- minute. Mauritania? Maybe because it is Mauritania, but they are playing no, they they play very, very well. Good. I think that um, the game will be very balanced. Mm. The South African team... I don't think they have, um, they are solid defensively. Morocco were very wasteful. Yeah. Truth be told, they were very wasteful. So because of that, I think Kivet will qualify. Interesting. Do you agree? Oh dear. What a game. Don't forget, it's, <laughs> it's a surprise tournament already. So, <laughs> for, so I, I, think, have, I, I have decided to listen, go for the surprising. I the, think the, the reason story why. favors South Africa. It just looks like this is 
one tournament where they will go all the way. In my opinion, that's why I think South Africa. Will win. Well, like, like the reason why I think South Africa won't win is the reason why I think Kevin won't win. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like no, the, but no, no, it doesn't make yeah. sense. The reason why, no, 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 the reason why Cape Verde, the reason the, the 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 strength of Cape Verde that I think they can use to beat South Africa is also the weakness in which South Africa can find yeah. to beat them. Okay, so when you watch South Africa, yeah, their transition is very quick, quick, direct. But when they do that, it is extremely expansive. And the game against Morocco, when they were leading by a goal to nil, and like, as I said, Morocco still created a lot of opportunities through that. It was at times that they one final pass. They missed the pen. Yeah. Yeah. The pen. Zero. At times, well, that's that one final quality ball or the lack of decision that, that, that can kill them. And South Africa don't know how to play being compact. I don't know. I've not seen them do that. Yeah. It's not, I it's saw not Daniel their DNA. was complaining after the game. Oh, you in were? the game against oh, Morocco, he said yeah. they were too open. <laughs> oh, they were too open. Oh, I'm not the only person who's seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw Daniel's tweet. <laughs> but if you want to beat Capo Verde, that is exactly what you need. Yeah. Because when Capo Verde also do take the ball in their transition, they flat forward and they, they back their press up or they back their movements up. Yes. So South Africa can also then transition well. That is the space they find. However, I think that Cabo Verde are more physical than South Africa. Mm. I think they are more physical than South Africa. To begin with, they are West Africans, so they do, yeah. Uh, yeah. they I are familiar I with the they weather. Are, yeah. I think they are more physical. But I think that in the end, South Africa have just got what it takes. And that is largely because they've got winners in that team. We keep saying that they've got Sundowns back four with the goalkeeper. These are winners. They've got Pesitao. Oh, yeah. He's won with Ali. So when at this point you're looking for winners who knows who know what it means to play at this stage. And, and I think the evidence is there. Yeah, the evidence is there. And I think that is what they will they, that, that's what that will carry that is what will carry them through in this game. So I think Essay might just with the the the, the winning mentality they've got around the team yeah. naked. On Sicho you miss the uh, the the you miss the metaphor there. Oh you saying the evidence? evidence is there. Evidence yeah. everybody has missed it. It means it's a dry, it's a dry metaphor. It is not. Okay, explain so yourself. Maybe I was not fooling. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the striker who scored South Africa's first goal? He's got evidence something. Thank you. Uh, oh, that. <laughs> uh, you guys are too slow, man. <laughs> you. You're too slow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Evidence, my yeah. copa. Yeah, you've yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go you, Daniel was going to say something. Yeah, I was saying on Citro's point, brilliant, but that's why I think Inverd will win. Yes. Okay. I think Inverd will win because in as much as both teams are expansive, Kivet have shown throughout the competition that they are way more clinical than the South Africans. And technically also, I, I believe they have they more better. gifted players. Mm. So Kivet may not have to carve South Africa open and enter the box before they can score goals. They mm. can score from everywhere. They can score from everywhere. And they are that good. Now, they also have a better threat when it comes to set pieces. And we've seen them use it throughout the competitions. Maybe... Not all have ended up in goals, Both. but we've seen them create some the very good scenarios. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, 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 danger, the danger is there. So for me, um, if you remember from the bracket, <laughs> yes. I predicted the Cape Verde versus Equatorial yeah, 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 yeah. I still maintain that Cape Verde are going to, are going to at least <laughs> from the left side of the draw. This Cape Verde, yeah. Cape Verde so Cape Verde for you? Yeah, Cape Verde yes, for me. Yes. Let's say for me. Yeah. Essay for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yes. And go just go. like the way I want Nigeria to go out, legit, I also want Bafana to go out. I wanted Bafana I, to do the job for bro, me. This is Muruku. This is the Bafana group or Bafana that the GFA president Katakuriku said. That is why I want them in the final. Two years ago. <laughs> That's why I want them to go out. Yeah, yeah he said two years ago that is the West. So that Bafana team he's ever seen. So he's seen the West yeah, Bafana team. Oh, but they grouped. Me, legit, I just know they like Bafana. All right. Yeah. The free group, they are yeah, in they, the contest. They deal with we are. Uh, Get to create with his black star. Galant's black stars are home. Yes. Galant. Yes. Fantastic. Man, he, he's uh, always confused. <laughs> this West African affair, Mali <laughs> against <laughs> Cote d'Ivoire. Ah. Neighbors, against, neighbors, really? No, yeah, Mali against Cote d'Ivoire. Um, Cote d'Ivoire will qualify. Quick, Cote d'Ivoire will qualify. There's just, they're, they're just too much. This is why. Goodwill happened. There was there. a clear... Look... The imprint of coaching, if you if you could feel it in the competition, it was look. I don't think we see. Am I fine? You didn't get anything wrong. We saw that game clear. We saw the instructions clear again. The Senegal, Senegalese team. We spoke about the fact that Senegal had some issues. They had some problems. We were not sure what to expect from Fire, but he has shown us that look. He understands his team. Yeah. 
He knows his team. He knows when to call upon certain players at certain times. From the starting 11 to the substitution. He to didn't get anything wrong. Everything was spot on. And you see, that is the sort of performance you need for the crowd to be behind you. Now, a couple of days ago, four days ago, Ivorians were very doubtful. Now they are full of confidence and That's the right. players themselves are also full of confidence. True. We spoke about the importance of, yes, it might have looked negative because not many people have done it. But that new manager bounce, it takes you three, four games. Now three, four games is what you need. Please, you are quick. By the time that, that one, comes to an end, you are a champion. Now, now, you. A very important thing also, this Malian team, I've, I've questioned their mentality from the start of the competition, even before. We've always seen them in calf competitions. They do really well in group stages. When they get to the knockout rounds, they're a bit shaky. We saw it in the group stages. Even the South Africa game that they won, we saw them struggle to what, manage moments in the game, manage scenarios in the game. When Burkina Faso, who had played nothing in that round of 16, scored that penalty, it was almost chaos. They were shaking. Yeah. And my point is, look, I don't think Mali can handle Cote d'Ivoire the host nation, the in confidence the of the Ivorians. I don't think they can The added it. pressure. The added France. pressure. Look, mm. Cote d'Ivoire win. Lassie Sinayoko is having a tournament to remember. Obviously, a lot to be riding on him. Um, and Mali, there was a time when Mali had this knack of making it to the semifinals and always winning third and beating Ghana yeah. in the process. <laughs> uh, Mali has always been that team. Yes. The Belgium nearly, of Africa. Nearly yeah. Exactly. Like the the, yeah, exactly. I think I think that we will be asking too much of them. To ask them to be Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, to be Cote d'Ivoire and Cote d'Ivoire under the circumstance in which Cote d'Ivoire themselves find themselves yeah. in the tournament. Look, but for Morocco, they would have been booted out of the tournament. Yeah. Morocco had to do them a huge favor. That is why they virtually supported Morocco against South Africa. Yeah. In fact, Cote d'Ivoire still have a goal difference of minus three. They still owe the tournament three goals. Exactly. <laughs> but what? Once they were able to beat one of the favorite of the tournament, and for the fact that they came back from a goal down, yep. in fact, you credit them because they deserve to win. But I think that on another day, they would have found themselves two goals down before even trying to win again. I think Sadio that Mane. Ismail Asai ball, in my view, was a clear penalty. Mm. The one that he had a Ivorian defender one-on-one, yeah. he ran past him and then clearly that was a penalty. But Mane should have been, sent off, been sent off. No, in, in Africa, we don't send, send off, off staff player. Baby. No, we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a fact. We don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that. We don't send off staff no, player. No, no, we don't spoil our game like that too. You, you, you play, you mean Andrea used the staff player? No, come on, man. Okay. He's gone past that accolade. <laughs> we, in Africa, <laughs> because he was sent off only two years ago. So I'm asking Africa, you. <laughs> look at Mani, stature. And oh, okay. Right. So, no, for that, that point, I don't take it by you, pussy. <laughs> Which point would you take? No, that man is level. Is Mane, that they, they, level. That's why he's saying. Are we ah. talking about somebody who's won the African Super of the Year? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dimly, let's not digress. So, Dede Ayawo. No, no, you're me, G. So, you're calling, you, 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 Cote d'Ivoire good? Yeah, I'm calling Cote d'Ivoire too. Because I think... Again, Mali, like you rightly said, we've all agreed. Whenever the stage is that high and you expect them, you demand from them to perform, they tend mm, kind yeah. of you just start hiding. And I've not enjoyed the way some of their key players have performed in the tournament, especially the boy from Spurs. I don't think yeah, he's been he's that not, dominating in yeah. midfield. And that is showing in whatever they are doing. They are, they are not being able to control games, even when they are leading. To, and we see him at Spurs. When Spurs are leading, he gets his food on the ball and control the tempo, virtually kill the steam. He's unable to do that. So I expect Cote d'Ivoire, look, they are on their ascendancy. All their ex-players are trooping to the camp, hotel, drug bar. It's, it's like they've allowed them to have proper access to the team. Unlike we, where we think that <laughs> Aziz and Co <laughs> should be given access to our team to be beating people. Shit, huh? So I expect Cote d'Ivoire to qualify. Uh, Sicho, you think so? Y- yeah, I think so. You remember what? when I said last time that on the pod that if Cote d'Ivoire able to sort out the centre back partnership they've got, and you you in the game against Senegal when they played Indica and Kosonu, yeah. Yeah. it was a much better partnership than Willy Bully 
and in Dika. Sure. And and when they brought on and and what and again I thought what worked for them again was the fact that Saduman is not your 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 fast pacey winger anymore. So they could risk playing Sergio Rie, who who doesn't always have to look over his shoulder because he can catch up with money anyway, yeah. but still offered a lot going forward. But coming into this game against Mali, Mali's midfield are also very physical. Yeah. And that was one thing that Cote d'Ivoire got over Senegal. Mm-hmm. The physicality in the middle of the park. And the fact that, so what they did was they put Sangari and Fofana forward and Jean-Michel Sarri became the deep line playmaker. True. So he would recycle the ball and let the two other midfielders would be more physical. I think the physicality in, in, physicality in the middle of the park could go into the advantage of Mali. And you're saying that if they win that, that could be where... If Mali wins that. That midfield battle. That midfield battle, that is where the game is won. Sure, because Cote sure. d'Ivoire have not shown that they've got a clinical finisher who with one chance can score. But Mali have shown. You mentioned it's Nayoko is having an incredible yeah, tournament and yeah, it's in the pop. Yes. So if Mali can be dominating in that midfield, and that is what Cote d'Ivoire did use to beat. Yep. They just completely bulldozed that midfield yeah. over. And that is my fear for Cote d'Ivoire. They've got the aura behind them. They've got the vibe behind them. And that could also be the temptation. That because you are playing at home, and we saw it against Equatorial Guinea, when everybody was backing them, they flopped. Sure. When everybody wasn't necessarily backing them, they won it. Now, what would the reaction be from the victory of Senegal? Would they be more settled? And what risk would he take with Aurea? Is he going to still play Aurea more defensive as your player there? Yes, obviously. And that is where I have my fear for Cote d'Ivoire that Mali could just use the physicality and the technicality in the midfield to, to overpower what uh, Cote d'Ivoire will, will, will probe at them. And that is where, for me, I think the game is won or lost. Otherwise, Cote d'Ivoire goes through. But I think Mali have got what, to he- what it takes yeah. to help them. That's why I'm leaning towards so Mali. So you're going Mali? I'm leaning towards Mali, yeah, Mali. I've, I've, seen, that, I've, I've Mali. seen that Mali midfield too, and I've seen that Ivorian midfield. Bro, like, I, I'm not... <laughs> I, I don't agree with the Mali midfield having a bit more physical. Look, did you see Fofana? Oh, my word. He's a bulldozer. No, no, no. The you, guy, you, like, you, it, it, it's, it's also about playing like you're possessed. Yeah. And that's how the Ivorians perform. And for me, I think that's the only point I really agree with you on. I feel like, and I say this all the time, sometimes when you exert, when teams exert too much energy in a previous game, it's really to. hard for them to turn up in yeah. the next match. They've been out. Beat. Got yeah. out and that quick. last game against uh, Senegal, it took everything. Yeah. But, but that was, again, good coaching, as Danny said, because he knew no, when to take did, off but for it took and everything and because we, had, we saw the players play in ways that they had never played throughout the tournament. Yeah. That they was just the, couldn't go back there and disappoint. Exactly. They're, they're like, that's the best game we saw for Fana play. Sangari was injured, came back on. He was up for it. Jean-Michel Seri. But you see, the, the interesting thing is that Kessie didn't last the game. He came on. Yes. So, uh, for Fana was taken off. Um, Sangari was taken off. I think it was Seri. The, the Seri, the yeah, Seri lasted the whole game. But Seri hadn't been playing throughout the tournament. Throughout the competition. So, so they are still they relatively still fresh. Energy. Yeah. Oh, so, fair uh, enough. Uh, no, because game. when you look at Dumbia, when you look at uh, Kulibali, Kamara, Haidara, and that midfoot box that they've tend to play, also in numbers, coach, sometimes yeah, that yeah, is where. Yeah, so they, so they, Mali have not necessarily they, dominated games with only possession. But they've outnumbered. But they've outnumbered most teams. And, and, and that is why I'm saying that it, it's about if Mali can win the midfield battle Fair with enough. their physicality and their positioning. But yeah, we'll see. I think this Mali... One, Seko Fofana is five players. <laughs> that guy didn't some But he has left us. We're not those oh teammates here. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's yeah. left us. He's gone on loan to... To uh, 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 Tihad. He's, he's having a season to uh, Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, got, I mean, he's left on SI2. IT fuck. IT fuck. He's replacing Jordan Henderson. Yeah. I want quick prediction on this. My Listen, my personal favorite team I just have called is DRC. They mm. play some really good football, very structured football. Their problem is finishing. <laughs> the last match, they missed the services of Gar Kakuta, that late injury. So he didn't play the game against mm-hmm. Egypt. Mm-hmm. We all predicted that Egypt would beat them, except Daniel, who expected them to beat uh, Egypt. And they did it. Their goalkeeper is having <laughs> the time of his life. Uh, uh, Lionel Mbissa. Mbassi. Mbassi, sorry. Uh, but Against Guinea, another team that we didn't expect to get through to the quarterfinals, but they are there now. Yeah. How do you think that's going to go? Um, first of all, let me start by saying that Lionel Mpasi is the true LM of football. That's true. He's the original Lionel M of football. Uh, but the one that is older than all him is other, not the original. All other Lionel M's are Lionel fake. Lionel Mpasi is more original fake. than Lionel Messi. Of course. 
at least when he gets a winning a penalty to take his country for it, he will score. He doesn't blast it over the bar. The streets because will never Messi has a history of doing that. Oh, but he blasted it over the bar. I wasn't to Copa America. Yeah, he finished against, against and cried and said, you won't play again. And they begged him. And they the begged him. And, and, and the president had to come and beg him. He came back and won it. He had to come and I beg him. He shocked. He and even that one, they gave the him five penalties in the competition to practice. To practice ahead of the final penalty shootout. And that's formidable arranged. Arranged Copa America every six months. Every six months. So that he can learn and pass he went against Guinea. Congo Charlie, wins. in some way. Congo are good. In as much as I said they would beat Egypt, I expected them to do it within regulation time or at least extra time. They have a say. Charlie, Cedric Bakambu, no. Can't score. That he hates the goal. I don't even understand, though. No, that's been him through, 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 through like, throughout. No, but I'm excited. his career. No, he's been, he's been a very poor finisher throughout yeah, his career. Since. But in my opinion, at least the way I see life, when you do something over and over and over and over and over again, at least a slight improvement. <laughs> we should see a slight improvement. Uh, and when the guy was at Villarreal, this is how he was. Yeah. And I'm seeing him at the AFCON again, and he literally can't score. And you see, yeah. the problem with this is that they have very good uh, wing uh, yeah, wide, wide players, players yeah. but who are not necessarily out and out goal scorers. Exactly. So Wissa will contribute, but you can't rely on him to be nah. the goal scorer. So that's why the extra responsibilities on Bakambu. And if it continues this way, you would face a team that will be clinical, score there at one chance, may not prevent you from creating opportunities, but at the end of the day, you will self-destruct. And that's where it's going with, with uh, uh, DRC. In the game against Egypt, Egypt did nothing. Egypt did absolutely nothing, like what they had done throughout the competition. Where a man down, but it's not like they defended well. They still allowed the DRC to carve them open. And still... They couldn't score. The Congolese couldn't score and they had yeah. to go to penalties. You may not be this lucky as the, as the competition progresses. And because I'm not seeing an improvement, I feel like this is the game. The other team. Will Jurassi play? I think Will it's, he start? I think it's fit now. Who? Jurassi. Mm, I think it's fit now. I'm not sure. Because if that guy, seriously, I think he was fit enough to come off the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I give Jurassic 60 minutes. He started the, the last game in the group stages and came off. And then, then he came, came off from the bench, the bench yeah, in the last the 16. 16. So I think he has so some, he can start. I think maybe. I think for me, if I'm the Guinean head coach, I'll start him. Yeah, risking him. Look, the point is DRC are open. You can create chances against them. If you create or two or three decent chances in the first 60 minutes, you are leading 2-0. That's guaranteed because Jurassic will put the ball in the back of the sure. And after that, you can take him off and come and close shot. Because DRC... I don't think they, they can't score more than one goal. Have they scored more, they than, one? more than one? They've not scored more than one. It's 1-1. They one, 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 one. One. They They've drawn all four matches. Yeah. And they have outplayed <laughs> their, their opposition <laughs> yes, in all four in all matches. Of the Guineans themselves don't create many. Mm -hmm. They are not, they've not looked the most convincing. But again, you can't, you can't bet against teams like this, especially in competitions. Under normal circumstances, Guinea should be out. But when you see a team finding a way to limp through, Look at the game against Equatorial Guinea. Even with a man down, they didn't look as dominant. If you were watching the game, you would think it was 11 against yeah. 11. Yeah. You would not know that. But when they realized that the game was going to extra time, they had to push. They forced the issue and they found a way. And Equatorial missed the penalty. Equatorial missed the penalty. They found a way. So they just... They, this one, I'm not going strictly according to numbers. I'm going with feeling. Instincts. Instincts. I just feel like Guinea... Your feeling is... Guinea will be DRC. Interesting. In fact, I think two things... The two most important players for Guinea have not been fit. Because when Nabi Keita came onto the pitch, yeah. he completely changed everything for Guinea. Every completely. Touch, he completely. He just, he just knew that. Okay, the, the Nabi Keita is here and everybody is here. Like, the you boss. see it. it was so if Nabi Keita can be fit and give them some 75 minutes, I think Guinea will go through. And if GRC has got, what, has got again, some 75 minutes in him, I think that has been Guinea's problem throughout the tournament. Yeah. The fact that their two most important players have not been fit enough to give them so many minutes. And if they can squeeze these minutes from them, I don't see how DRC survive it. Because you mentioned it, they don't score. Yeah. The DRC don't score. And and as good as they are when they defend, I think against GRC on this continent, every defense surface. Against any mid for navigator, if he can play at the highest level for at least 75 minutes, He's important. It's a problem for teams. If these two players can give them about 70, 75 minutes, Guinea won't survive it. I think I, I agree mean, with DR Congo won't survive it. Sorry. I think I agree basically with what the guys have said because at the end of the day, we've gotten to 
the stage where one there isn't another opportunity to fix things mm -hmm. everything will be decided on the day and it will come down to the fine margins and if you don't score goals you don't win football games i think for the fact that drc are excessively wasteful as a team when it comes to putting the chances into the back of the net you want to lean towards guinea because guinea can afford to score very early and DRC may need like 10, 20 chances to equalize. <laughs> to and as a result one. of that, <laughs> I, 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 I think I agree holistically with what the guys have said. You need to go through. All right. So you, you didn't make your pick. Uh, you want to DRC run? and Mali? And, and Guinea. Uh, and Guinea? Yeah. Oh, oh. I think DRC. Right. <laughs> now, because I simply just like DRC and also because I want Gael Kakuta to <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the man who put Chelsea into the problems. Yeah, ah, yes. You know when Chelsea Jack signed in, they started oh, X. So you know that. You know that there are some so many. You see, like the, some of the craziest things I've seen in African football is like all those players that probably like represented other countries uh, at youth level, and then you hear that they are playing for African teams, and you're shocked. Gakakuta is one of them. When yeah. I hear Gakakuta and and Dia Congo, it just makes no it. sense. And the other one that makes absolutely no sense. Absolutely no sense. Bebe? No. Bebe too, yes. I, I like if anybody told you that Bebe of Portugal, Man United, plays for Kevin, you would tell the person they're crazy, but it's happening. But you know the one that makes the the absolute zero sense? One that plays for Central African Republic. Which one? Which one? Think about it. Former Inter Milan. Central, they are not in the competition. So me, my mind. Is ah, I'm trying to give you clues. But so mention the name. Former Milan, 2013 under 20, alongside Pogba. Kondogbia, Kondogbia. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kondogbia plays for Central African Republic. And you know, you know, you know why it's actually extra surprising. Geoffrey, the under 20 with France. Yeah, he was a Pogba. He was with Pogba. That's Pogba. what Tove. I'm saying. He fell off small, pe. Yeah. But even in the last few years, he came up. Yeah. Alex, Alex he went Madrid. to Atletico Madrid. Yeah. So it's not like France didn't want radar, him. Yeah, so, yeah. It's not like France didn't want him. He just stood up and he said he wanted to go to. <laughs> That's so wild. Uh, he said, look, for, for me, I have never respected any country who's not used players from their own country. So I don't, support, I don't support France. You don't like... I, I will <laughs> never support them when it comes to football. France. Yes. But they use players from their own country. No, no, no. Those players were born and raised all, there. All, all, all those people are Oh, African. no, they were born they and raised there. They are African say players. No, no, no. <laughs> they, my way of looking at them, ah, I've seen, seen, seen a white, I've seen a black Frank, uh, Frenchman before. Of, a black Frenchman? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes, they, of course. Who is he? Pogba. Pogba. Pogba He's African. Mbappe. They are all from Africa. All of them. But what black person is not from Africa? Oh. So therefore, they should use their white. Do you think they would have won the cup? bro, you don't get Selef for Guinea. That's our episode on the AFCON. I don't know who your pick is uh, when you're seeing this, but let us know who you think will make the semifinals. Who will be your top four countries to make the semifinals? Leave us a comment, uh, of course, and uh, we'll, 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 we'll look at them, we'll read them, and share some of them in our next episode. So make sure you like, subscribe. And share, send someone a link, introduce them to Malam Go Podcast because this is where the Malams meet. And, <laughs> all the just and day all, here. And Malams meet and conjugate, ah! cross pollinate, cross fertilize ideas. That is right. Anyway, so cheers, guys. Cheers for watching. <laughs> <laughs>